Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to this presentation on federal grant record retention. This is a uh, kind of an obscure subject that's often overlooked by grantees just because, well, let's face it, once a grant ends, the first move is to put all your files in a box, you know, stuff them on a zip drive and shove them away somewhere never to be seen again and then just move on to the next thing. And that's cool, but there are some regulations that govern, uh, you know, the storage and maintenance and retention of federal grant documents. And I just want to make you aware of them and why you shouldn't hold on to those files any longer than you're legally required to. So well, let's get into it. Now let's start with the top line of this table that applies to all grantees. The feds require grantees to keep their grant records and supporting documents for three years from the date they submit their final expenditure report, which is often just called the final report because your program and financial reports are typically combined into a single document. And keep in mind the the retention clock starts ticking from the moment you submit your report, not on the date your grant closes, not on the last day the final report is due. It's all based on when you turn in the report. And if you look at the, the other lines in the table, you'll see that uh, three years is a common, common theme. These record retention rules also apply to subrecipients working with pass through entities. So if you're a subrecipient, you're also on the hook for keeping your records. Now, if you have a multi year grant that renews annually, your record retention period starts from the moment you submit your annual reports. Now, I've never done this with the grants I've managed. And I've managed a lot of five-year grants that were technically just one-year grants renewed annually for five years. But, you know, that's how the funding agency structured them. Uh, had I stuck to this three-year rule for the annual grants, I would have been throwing away grant documents in years four and five while the grant was still ongoing. Now, that, to me, didn't feel right. So I always kept everything until the entire grant was closed and then and then I started you know my own internal uh, retention clock rolling and just in case you're wondering it's uh there's a nice little safeguard in the regulations for grantees the feds or pass through agencies uh, can't stick you with a longer retention period unless there's a really good reason for it. So all things being equal and normal, the three-year retention period is all you'll deal with. Here are a couple situations where you'll need to keep the documents beyond the retention period. So like if there's litigation or if you're notified that you're going to be audited, obviously you're going to have to hold on to your records. Uh, if the the federal government or your pass-through entity tells you in writing to keep your records beyond the three-year retention period, make sure you make sure you keep them. And of course, in some cases, the funding agency or your pass-through entity will just tell you, hey, look, send us your files, we'll hold on to them for you. And in that case, you're off the hook. You just send them everything and they will store them for you. And this is this is the key to the, the record retention window. As long as you keep your files, they can be audited and subject to disallowances and repayments. So if the federal auditors show up after the retention period closes, 
and you've already disposed of your files, there's nothing to be audited, and there's nothing the feds can do about it. If there's going to be an audit, the burden is on the funding agency to schedule the audit before the retention period ends and to notify you to save all your documentation. What you don't want to happen, for example, is, <clears throat> excuse me, 10 years after a grant closes, a random auditor decides to review a program, you're still holding all your files, and the auditor discovers you didn't properly document the purchase of whatever the hell, and he wants your organization to repay Uncle Sam $10,000, for example. Now, this is the nightmare scenario because the grant's already been closed forever, so you can't just uh, forego any, uh, any unspent grant funds or return those funds. That repayment is going to come from your unrestricted funds, and it's going to impact the people you serve, or it could cost an employee or two or three their job if you need those funds you know, for the repayment, or it could lead to insolvency. You know, holding on to your old grant documents after the legally required retention period is like storing toxic waste. There's just no upside to it. Now, unless you're required to keep your old federal grant records because of your own policies and procedures or state law or because of one of the exceptions we talked about earlier, again, there's no benefit to keeping your files. Uh, nostalgia is overrated. Uh, the records don't magically turn to gold. And, you know, let's be honest, <laughs> nobody ever goes back to look at old emails or purchase orders or whatever. Uh, as soon as you submit the report, make a note in your calendar, three years plus one day in the future, and plan a document destruction party. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, now if your policies have a longer retention period, obviously schedule the party around, you know, your own timeline. Um, and before you forget, take a look at your policies and procedures. If you don't have a record retention policy, well, this is a really good time to make one. You know, I encourage my clients to align their federal grant record retention policy with the federal regs, unless their state law or other regulations require them to go beyond the Fed's guidelines. Um, you know, in case you missed it a few slides back, the regulation governing grant record retention is at 2 CFR 200.333. The bottom line is don't become audit bait by holding on to your files, you know, too long. And there you go. That's all I have. Thank you very much for your time. If you have any questions, please email, email me, excuse me, email me through my website or reach out on social media. I am here to help. If you found this useful, like it or give it a thumbs up. Feel free to comment. I love the feedback. And be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future presentations. Thanks. See you next time.